Hello everyone and welcome back to To Mars and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. Here we are with our ISRU lander that we delivered to the surface of the moon in the previous episode. And I have tweaked the numbers for it. And I've basically assumed that instead of drilling for what it was originally set up for, which was Mars regolith, I've set it up for water ice. So that'll be much easier to get hydrogen and oxygen out of than the original settings. So much more efficient, but we do have to make sure that it's not too efficient. I hope I did the math right and so that, you know, we don't have surplus hydrogen and oxygen that we're not supposed to be getting. I basically assumed a 20% loss rate. So there's still like 20% rock and then 80% ice that we end up with. And now that's probably at the upper limit of what we could expect. The question is whether this unit actually has the new settings, right? We already delivered this. It might still have the old settings. I'm not sure. Right now, hydrogen is still boiling off, even though we've got this huge radiator. Uh, we are only drilling for ore right now. We're not converting. I'm going to fill up the tank with ore first and let's see how long it takes. We're at three hours here. And so uh, 600 units of ore. We'll see how long it takes to get that. And there's that warning. I, I'll turn it off some other time. I'll just wait. It's important that we also see the boil off happening, even though, really, radiator. <laughs> Please use the radiator. And then we'll turn off the drills and then convert and see if we accidentally gain mass, right? Once we've topped off with ore, we shouldn't be gaining mass anymore. We should lose mass in the conversion process. And then we also want to see whether we recoup the hydrogen and oxygen that we lost. As far as I can tell, uh, one unit of ore is 10 kilograms. So we're looking at about six tons of ore there. This did have MLI layers on as well. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a number here. It'd say no MLI. So we did everything we could for it. We've got the radiator. We've got the MLI layers. And still we're losing pellant in the dark in the dark on the moon mind you you know the cold side i don't know what analytic cooling means well it's basically taken close to two days to get the six tons of ore but that's not unreasonable really that seems like a reasonable pace for a single rig so, yeah, I think we would leave that as is. Let me just stop the surface harvesters. Okay. So now the conversion, we're at 14.844 tons. And I'll start both simultaneously. They're both uh, at a good pace there. And we are losing mass. So that's correct. Let me just turn one off and see that we're losing mass. So there's just the oxygen right now. We should lose the 20% waste regardless. Yeah, okay, so that's being lost. Okay, and then the hydrogen. I also adjusted numbers for water and oxygen, but we don't have separate containment for those, so we can't check those. So I'm gonna have both units run and see how long it takes. 21 hours, 29 minutes right now. And we're expecting less than six tons of fuel. We're looking at maybe five tons of fuel. We lost way more than that, though. And we've got a surplus of oxygen, so I'll turn off the oxygen for a bit. Okay, so we're done. That did not take very long. The conversion doesn't take very long. And... We've got 1,060, so we got a net gain now. So it does seem to have the new numbers. Uh, I think we can work with this. So we'll just leave this be for now. And let me start the surface harvesters again, and we'll keep everything running until it all tops off. It should top off in the background. We'll check that. So yeah, we're going to just keep it going. And maybe we'll have a full load of fuel after we check back on it later on. Okay, drill. Alright, so that's one thing that might be working correctly. We'll find out. Somebody said that the simple logistics thing doesn't work with Kerbalism. Uh, I'm hoping that that's just the life support thing and we can still transfer propellant. That's all I really need for, to transfer propellant. 
Uh, it's just that maybe the simple logistics won't work with Kerbalism as far as sharing life support is concerned. Maybe, I don't know. We'll have to see. So anyway, we've got this running and we'll just have to test that out. Uh, the hydrogen is not replenishing though. Maybe we'll just do the hydrogen first. Stop locks. The locks isn't boiling off right now. I don't know what's going to happen, but we'll see. I mean, maybe I should leave it, but I think that if you run both converters, maybe there's more heat, waste heat, and that causes more boil off. I'm not sure. Okay, so next we are going to have to test boil off with our NTP tanks, our nuclear thermal propulsion tanks. So we have to launch one of them into orbit and see whether they are balanced and whether they have boil off. Otherwise, we're going to have serious trouble using a nuclear thermal propulsion system. Okay, so here is our test tank. It is a somewhat undersized version of the nuclear thermal propulsion tank from NASA's proposal for a nuclear thermal propulsion ship that would go to Mars. Uh, I needed to undersize it because that one was just a little bit too big for our system here. And so it's just a six meter diameter. I think the original one was seven. And so, yeah, it is down to 32 tons wet, 11.38 tons dry. So again, this is per NASA's proposal, so it is really heavy compared to its wet mass, and that's because it contains hydrogen, it needs to be fairly thick, and of course hydrogen is not very dense, so yeah, we have to deal with that if we're going to use nuclear thermal propulsion system, and of course it has RCS fuel, it has its own controller built in as well, it's an independent sort of system, and we have radiators, that's in addition to the mass of the tank, so that's separate, and a solar panels and uh, comm dishes uh, right here. So we've got the works as it were, and we're gonna try to deliver it to orbit. The original system, these tanks were meant to be delivered to high orbit by SLS, not the low earth orbit that we're delivering it to with this, but SLS is somewhat more capable than this, obviously, so we'll have to make do. If we had a hydrogen stage here, that would be different. We could probably put it into a somewhat higher orbit, but we don't really need to or want to because this will simplify docking everything together ahead of time. And eventually we'll test it on a journey to the moon. So yeah, I had to make a special fairing for this because this payload is actually taller than the normal uh, payloads I was expecting to put on this. It's just big. So I, I tried to make it as big as I could while still fitting on this system. And we'll see how it works. Maybe we have extra margin, maybe we don't. Come back here, fairing. We'll see what happens. I'll, I think I'll try to land the, the Orion carrier plane this time. So let's remove the normal engines and instead put the Prometheus vacuum engines, which will give us double the thrust and therefore allow us the time to get back to the Orion carrier plane to land. So second, only the second time trying to land it. Still got the parachutes on. Hopefully this will work out. These have these are heavier, of course, and uh, they have about the same ISP, about the same efficiency. So it's not a big difference really altogether. Okay, let us take it outside. So mainly this is a boil off test. We're trying to see whether this tank is going to be able to stay stable, keep its hydrogen happy with the solar panels helping to cool it off and the MLI layers and the radiators. But of course we've had trouble with the ISR unit keeping its hydrogen stable, so that is the question. But we'll find out. Okay, but we are going to line up with the moon because that's convenient. I think we want to be on the opposite side though. I think we're a little bit late. This is so close it's tantalizing though. Okay. Well, we have to account for the inclination we're going to in order to hit Cape Canaveral, so this is probably okay. Alright, throttle up, SAS on. Uh, I seem to have extra engines here. <laughs> oh, I've got the Prometheus, I put the Prometheus vacuums in the last minute, so we didn't place them correctly. Okay. Alright, here we go. Ignition. And launch. Got to remember aim camera in the future. And off we go again. Boca Chica is still looking spiffy. And 
as we approach the speed of sound here. This should be a relatively light payload for the upper stage. I mean, it's not up to the upper stage's capacity, let's put it that way. So maybe we can stop the carrier plane a little bit before 4,000 meters per second, which is what we've been doing so far to aid the recovery. 4,000 intended to put us a little bit beyond Cape Canaveral. Okay, cutting off some engines and starting to roll. And we are flattening out here. Throttling down. Maybe a little bit of pitch will be good. Don't really want the time to apoapsis is going down. Okay, let's try 3950. Alright. Separation. And switch. And fairings. Fairings. Ooh, I did I didn't want it to be down. I wanted the side-to-side -side fairings anyway. RCS on and oh, that's not what we want. And we need to control from here. Uh, make sure that RCS is on. Alright. Um, that's good. Ignition. And I'll adjust this here. This might not have been quite the right timing, it looks like. Well, I need to know our delta V here. We really don't need to pitch up, actually. We will have enough fuel to deliver this. There is liquid hydrogen boil-off, but we haven't deployed the radiators yet, so there's that. Uh, I don't think we're changing inclination very much right now, so I'll just turn back to prograde, basically, to finish this off. Just about at apoapsis here. Okay, shut down. This is in orbit, and we'll deploy stuff. But we need to get back to the carrier plane, which I wanted to fall down. Should have probably oriented this properly first before now, but we are still above. Oh, oh, oh no, don't do that. Kill rotation. Uh-oh. I did not want to see it with some... See, I should have set it up ahead of time. Shoot. No, no, this is not good. No, turn quicker. Nope, stop. Don't, I mean, don't stop puffing. We need to go this way. Okay, well, uh, maybe we can make this work. Ooh, not roll. Roll is bad. Okay, uh, maybe just in time. We're getting into plasma now. Oh, oh, no, 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 it's going too high. Come on. Oh, gosh. It just wasn't really well stabilized ahead of time. Okay. Oh. Yeah, that's not the normal way of going about things. Um, I'm gonna dump some fuel if I can. Now I've got comms. We still need some RCS right now. I felt like we were too heavy. We're certainly on the correct side of the cape this time. We are not overshooting. It's amazing what 50 meters per second can do for you. Still really don't need the food, water, and oxygen. Okay, coming back down again. Actually, I could probably turn Smart ASS off now. Switching to atmospheric autopilot. I think I'll turn short of it instead of going past and then turning. 
this may or may not give me enough room to turn around the correct way, we'll see. Okay, we shouldn't be using RCS for this anymore. Okay, I think given our speed and height we can turn now. Okay. Looking all right so far. Okay, gear down. And I'll check the functionality of the air brakes. Okay, so the air brakes are still working. Sometimes when I put the gear down, they don't. So and we probably need them here right now. Really, uh, for this part, I wish I had a cockpit view for this because it gives a better view of the runway. It's tougher to line up from a third person view like this. At least for me. I always end up a little bit off, whereas from a cockpit view, I tend to be able to line up a little bit better. Okay, here we go. And... Touchdown. Very nice. Hopefully everyone will agree that was very nice. Everybody's seen worse landings from me. And that's it. All right. Recover vessel. All right. So yes, we can bring it back. No problems. It continues to be very reliable in this respect. Okay, I want to correct the 3.4 degrees if we can, or as much of it as we can. And we're getting close to the point where we can do that. So let's see what we can do. Got delta V in here, might as well use it. 0.3 degrees, well, I think we can do the rest. Let's see, I want to reserve 100 meters per second though for deorbiting. So even though it probably has more than that without the load. But yeah, let's just take the 0.3 degrees for now. I would like to turn this thing's RCS off does have boil-off loss, but it's only 0 0.001 kilograms per hour. But will it stay that way? Note the heat penetration is going up. So that's not great. I would like it to be just zero, thank you. Uh, but anyway, I guess we can't have everything. But perhaps uh, being connected to this hurts? I don't know. Okay. I will take that, which is 0.23 degrees. We will now separate it. And off it goes in theory. Let's activate its RCS. Oh, it's back to being enabled. And uh, wrong way. Yes, it is free. And it does have its own control. 34 tons, let's call it, in orbit. But there is boil off. A tiny, tiny bit of boil off. Well, we'll examine that in the long run. Let's see. Um, let's say we control from here. I think we are already. And say that we want it pointing the sun, pointing at the sun. That will, you know, prevent, uh, provide a lower cross section to the sun. I don't know if that makes any difference at all. So if we have it hold like that, you know, if things were all right and proper, that would help. Mm, heat penetration is increasing, though, even as we go into the nighttime side. We're not there yet, though. All right, but we want to bring this down as 289 meters per second, so that should be okay. Let us verify, though. We want to bring it back close to, well, the Gulf of Mexico. We'll wait a little bit. The engines are almost certainly too touchy for this burn, but uh, yeah, two, two, two seconds is too much. I'll sit it out. I'll time warp. Oh, no, I don't want to time warp like that. <laughs> Not like that.
I'm in Fizz Warp. I was holding down Alt, but I guess I didn't hold down Alt firmly enough. Okay, we have a Descent Periapsis, and we are going to let go... Let me just see... Uh, it took so long to do the Retro Burn, we're not ending up anywhere I wanted to end up, but let's get rid of the adapter here, which will go into the atmosphere and everything. And arm the parachutes before I lose communication as well. Okay, off goes the adapter. Right. And finally surface negative. Oh, uh, surface positive actually. This thing is controlled the other way around. Still need to work on the curvature of that heat shield, but minor detail. And basically, I want to see both parts of our launch vehicle successfully recovered and everything. So we are going to follow this down. For the first time, we'll have both things covered. Show a complete recovery system. I mean, when I say recovery, of course, we're not like sending a ship out to pull this out of the water or anything. But you get the picture. At least nominally speaking, it should work out. And yeah, hopefully the Atlantic is big enough to make sure this does end up in the water instead of on some land. But then again, maybe it's easier to pick up on land. Who knows? I do wonder how much heat shields cost, actually. If we did want to save, if we did want to save some mass on this, uh, this much ablator is only really necessary for the lunar trajectories and high orbit tra trajectories. For a lower orbit, we wouldn't need to fit a heat shield this heavy. Okay, seriously slowing down now. And all right, that's through the worst of it. We are wherever we are. I can't really see. Probably. Oh, I don't know. They're probably overland. West Africa. And the parachutes bring us to 7.4 meters per second, but that should be okay here. Okay, we have set down and recover. So for the first time, we've properly recovered both stages. Though the carrier plane really pulled some serious G's because we didn't orient it properly quickly enough. So that was not ideal, but still made it. Okay, back to the hydrogen tank in orbit. And we're going to assess the boil off with that. That's our main deal here. Can we do a good nuclear thermal propulsion system? Ultimately, we would like to replenish its hydrogen from the moon. That would be nice. So we'll need some sort of vehicle to bring hydrogen up from the moon. That'll be a whole other design. I've never designed one of those before. I don't know if it's worth it or not. It's tough to say, but... That is the idea. We'll see. We'll probably just like have one of these tanks. I don't know if we should have one of these. These are pretty heavy. So maybe something that's only meant to contain the hydrogen for a short period of time will be fine from the moon so that we don't have so much dry mass, but we'll see. So right now we haven't lost a liter yet, so that's good. But uh, let's uh, take it over a fair amount of time, keeping in mind that we do have a Mars window to make eventually, and we need to do all our testing during that uh, within that time. So uh, let's see how much it loses in a day. How about that? I mean, I guess zero is asking for a lot. So then again, we should be this orientation to the sun, so ideal orientation to the sun right now. Basically, that's been a day, and we've lost 7 liters. So that's not, by percentages, quite a lot. Okay, so yeah, I guess it's acceptable. Uh, though the heat penetration, which used to be in milliwatts, is now in watts. Now let's see if that's going up or whether that's stable or not. It's actually going down in the dark, and then going up on in daylight. And peaks at 4.6. Or not peaking, it's actually increasing over time. So yeah, the boil off on a longer mission might be higher because it is increasing over time on the heat penetration. Uh, well, I don't know if uh, more 
radiators will do any good or whether it is just the best we can do. These radiators are 0.54 tons a piece, by the way. So we'll think about that, but I mean, at least it's manageable. It's not impossible to do stuff with. But on a mission to Mars, it's eventually going to be troublesome if we keep losing it. We'll see. Okay, let's check in on the ISRU lander, ISRU lander to see how it's doing as far as drilling is concerned, whether it's uh, topped off or not in the meantime, or where it's at. Okay, so how much do we have? Uh, well, it's filled up some more of the liquid hydrogen, but it hasn't topped it off yet. Let's uh, rename vessel. And this is ISRU unit, uh, unit 1. Okay. I guess we'll take that. So, let's see. So this has a capacity of 24,000. And comparing that to our tank that we have in orbit right now, this has a capacity of 258,000. So it would take the capacity of 10 of those ISRU units to fill this up. That's a lot to think about. Yeah, that's not great as far as using the ISRU, but we can land 10 over there. In fact, next time we should land at least one more and then add to this. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, it's going to be interesting. But it's only taken a few days to get the hydrogen we have over there. So it's possible if we had a little tank, a little ISRU farm over there to make this work. But maybe it's, uh, it may or may not be the best technique to uh, sort of optimize the situation. I'll call this IS, uh, NTP tank 1, and we'll want to add to this later, and hopefully we've got that off. Okay, so anyway, uh, just a few more tests to see how it works. I, I was wondering whether I would need to tweak this system to see if maybe we need to improve its boil-off situation somehow, but I think we're so close to it being, like, it's close to zero. It's just not quite there that maybe we'll have to accept this. I don't know if I can get it any better. So, yeah, unless you guys have suggestions for how we might get it better. We've got the MLI layers, we've got the radiators. I don't know if there's anything else we can do. We could have some sort of thing to refrigerate it. In other words, have a slot for hydrogen gas and then a converter that converts the hydrogen gas to liquid hydrogen. That could work. Uh, short of that, I don't know. So anyway, we have our first NTP tank here. We'll build a system. Uh, we don't have communication, which is something that we need to worry about. But anyway, this will be the start of one ship. This will probably be for crew mainly. And then for cargo, we'll be looking at using ion engines, but we'll see about that. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.